Specifically, we're going to be talking about the perfect system of verbs. This is the second one. So there are two systems of verbs. Each system has three tenses. We have the present system and the perfect system. Now, the present system is what we started with. We had the present tense, where we got amo, I love, or I am loving, I do love. And we got the imperfect, which talks about what we used to do or what we were doing, amabam. And we have the future, which obviously talks about what we shall do. Uh, I have will here on the slide. Sometimes that's used. But what we are going to focus on today is what's on the dark side of the slide here, the perfect system. And to understand the perfect tense, you have to understand how we talk about the past in English. In English, we have the simple past tense. It refers to a completed action in a completed time. I did my homework last night. I saw my friend on Saturday. I wrote a poem in the morning. I went to Finland on vacation last year. Well, last night, Saturday, in the morning, and last year, these are all finished periods. And everything you see there in blue is a completed action. That's the simple past tense. When we want to talk about a completed action in an incomplete period, we use something called the present perfect tense. So I've completed my homework. I have seen my friend three times this year. This year is not finished. I've written 10 poems so far this week. That isn't finished. The poems are, but the week isn't. I've been to Finland three times in my life and my life hasn't ended yet. So in Latin, we can express both of those tenses, the simple past and the present perfect, with one tense. We use the perfect tense. I did my homework last night. I have done my homework. In English, these are two separate tenses. In Latin, they are just one. So it's kind of like getting a two-for-one sale. We're finally catching a break. It's easier to go into Latin this time. So you can celebrate it. Now, to start building the perfect tense, you need to use the third principal part, which is pretty easy to put together, and it's almost always provided for you. Let's say it is characterized by the letter V. It will not always be. It has a unique and new set of endings, and it's used to describe something that one did or has done. So here's our paradigm verb, amo, amare, amawi. There's the V. Lawo, laware, lawawi. And that is I wash, to wash, and I have washed, or I washed. And by the way, you'll notice that the fourth principal part is being left blank. We don't need it just yet. Porto, portare, portawi is I carry, to carry, I carried or I have carried. Paro is I prepare. Now we go, of course, as I sail. And naro is I tell. And you can see all of these have that red V in the third principal part. They all end with an I. And that's going to be our gateway to the perfect. It won't always be a V. Unfortunately, there are a few exceptions. We have the very important verb sto, which is I stand, sto stare steti. So where we would expect a V, we get a T. And do dare dedi, I give, is do, like donum and donation. So again, where we would expect a V, we got a D. And uh, you'll notice over the second principal part, 
dare, there's no macron. That's another peculiarity. And of course, the one that's always going to be a regular is sum, sum esse fui. And fui kind of makes sense if you remember that as a capital letter, U would often be written as a V. So muto, mutare, mutawi. Muto is I change to change. I have changed. And we have creo and woko. These are words that we've seen before. The first principal part has the O with a macron. The second principal part of the verbs that we've done so far, except for sum, have are. And our third principal part have has the V. And I haven't put all of the macrons in. For now, I'm just focusing on the consonants more. So we take away the third principal part, and that's what we're going to use to build with. And here's this new set of endings. So we have wokawi, wokawisti, wokawit, wokawimus, wokawistis, and wokawerund. And some of these are pretty easy to identify because they look like other forms that we've used. Okay, so wokawi, I called or I have called. And again, in English, these would be two completely different things. It doesn't matter in Latin. So that's what the perfect tense looks like for a regular verb. Amawi, amawisti, amawit, amawimus, amawitis, amawerunt. Now let's see what happens if we want to use the irregular sum. And I'm switching back and forth here between amawi and wokawi. So now we have wokawi, right? I called or I have called. And if we bring sum into the picture, we're going to follow the same pattern, except we're going to swap out that V for a U. So there, so there are your perfect endings, right? We, wisti, wit, wimus, wistis, werunt. And we bring the third principal part from sum, which is hui, I was or I have been. And you can see that, again, if you remember that U and V are really the same letter, we have the same endings. So, fui, fuisti, fuit, fuimus, fuistis, fuerunt, I was or I have been. Okay, again, the English is the same. We're getting two tenses here for the price of one. And the endings are the same. So even though sum is a highly irregular verb, we can kind of predict how this one should conjugate. Now, you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, what about eram? Because eram, we learned, is sum in the imperfect. The difference is not important now. Eram is basically I was being or I used to be, where hui is I was or I have been. And for a while now, we'll be able to just use these as I was. And we'll know from context if anything else works. If I say Magnus Eram, I used to be great. Magnus Hui, I was great. As if to say like that one time, I was great in that play. So, with our third principal part, we've been able to do the perfect. Now let's take a look 
at the pluperfect. And remember, the pluperfect talks about the something that was passed from a past perspective. And it's going to translate into, I had done something. I had loved. And the implication is that there was another past event after that. Like, by the time you woke up, I had already eaten breakfast. So, we go to our 3PP. We take wokal. And now all we do is add the imperfect of sum to it. And there we go. Wokaweram, wokaweras, wokawerat. It's stable from there. And we get I had called, you had called, and so on. So the blue perfect is pretty easy. We just have to be careful to use it in Latin and in English correctly, because a lot of times in English people forget to use this. So now we have our perfect and pluperfect tenses. Wokawi, I called or I have called. Wokaweram, I had called. And look at those red letters. They all come from the third principal part. Well, the last part of this is the future perfect. And all we're going to do with this is bring in the future of sum. Wokawero, wokaweris, wokawerit, and so on. And this time, we're not going to use wokawer unt, we're going to use wokawer int. So there's a change there that we probably wanted to see in the beginning, but didn't get. And the future perfect, remember, has to do with two actions, one of them being completed from a future perspective, okay? So by the time you get there, I will have called. By the time you finish work, I will have already had dinner. Okay, that's the future perfect. And again, it's just coming from the same third principal part. So, your perfect, pluperfect, and future perfect, your per, pluper, fooper, per, pluper, fooper, all is based on that third principal part. You can see the VOCAV top to bottom, okay? And it's actually not that difficult as long as you remember how to translate these. And now we have our six tenses. We have the three on the left for the present system, which don't refer to anything that's been completed. Woko, I call, that's not finished. Wokabam, I was calling, is also not finished. And Wokabo, the future, isn't finished. But the perfect system on the right side refers to actions that are finished or had been finished or will have been finished. And they all come on the right side from that third principal part. And remember that the perfect tense of these six has these unique endings. We're not, we're not going to use them for anything else. So Latin has six tenses, two systems with three tenses each. And the perfect is the only tense that does not use regular endings. Okay, and that's it for now. Walete.